The next question seems to fit. <laughs> Mr. Ward, we'll start with a question uh, with you. State statutes state the school board's primary responsibility is to hire and supervise the superintendent. Would you, and if so, how would you work with the superintendent to handle a disagreement in regard to staff? I think a lot of that depends on, on, on the particular situation. Um, the board does not have direct responsibility for hiring and overseeing you know, individual staff members. Uh, if it's some kind of personal issue, then it should be you know, dealt with, with with the superintendent. The board it gets to some point, you know, the board can certainly ask questions of the superintendent, be sure that he or she is taking care of the problem. Uh, if it's a staffing issue related to budget, then certainly the board has oversight over, over, over um, all the all the budget lines, but as far as you know, which particular staff person is on on a, on a particular job assignment, except for some very possibly very extreme situations, that's really up to the superintendent. And so the board uh, generally should be should be staying out of that, other than other than gathering facts um, where needed. Thank you. Mr. Cordova. I think our uh, primary duties as a school board member is to manage by facts. I think when we steer our attentions away from situations and don't understand the true underlying and the facts that are regarded to that situation, we lose focus on it easily. As a school board member, I think uh, it's our responsibility also to do our homework on the matters. Uh, we expect our students as well as us also is to do our homework on those situations that arise. And, uh, Go back to communication, see it on both sides. See it from the staff side, see it from the superintendent side and us as the mediator, if you would, to see what's the best solution for that problem at that particular time. Thank you. Mr. Pacheco. You know, I certainly think that it's important to work with our supervise, uh, superintendent considering the board does choose who, they, who the superintendent is and um, I think that we need to give him more credit. We need to sit down and we need to listen to what he says as well as what the staff says and the community and what's best for our students. I think that um, communication is absolutely crucial. You need to hear both sides, not only your opinion. You must overcome your personality or whatever bias you may have. You need to um, listen to the supervisor, uh, to superintendent and get his take on things as well as uh, whatever staff member is in question. I think that it's important to listen to both sides. That's one of the issues I think this board has had. We haven't listened to both sides and um, I would certainly work uh, to settle any dispute with the superintendent. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Velasquez. I'm on the school board uh, as a leader and, and one to promote uh, high standards and so what's, uh, what's important to me with, with regard to staff are the qualifications and their experience for any particular position. But you know after a, a spirited discussion where I present my uh, rationale and, and argument to our superintendent, which I did recently, <laughs> my last uh, comment uh, will always be uh, you're the superintendent, uh, you're the one uh, for responsible for executing our, uh, our education system, and it's your call. Your call. Thank you. Mr. Chavez. Uh, the district has a policy to handle staff grievances. There's even a form to fill out. We need to let the chain of command process work to retain confidence in our system. By circumventing that chain of command, we, we indirectly or directly send a message to our administrators and our staff that we don't trust that they can take care of this, those situations themselves. When we send this message, we undermine the system and we lose the buy-in that we might have had. The protocols are in place there to make it as fair as possible for all people that are involved. What we really need is, is more dialogue between the staff and their administrator, or if it's between a teacher and a parent, we need to let those systems work the, work the situation out itself. Now, if you've gone through the whole chain of command and you still haven't 
solve the problem, then the superintendent can talk to the school board, but school board should really stay out of those processes, and let the chain of command take care of the situation itself. Ms. Martinez. I've always learned that there's three sides to every story. It's this side, this side, and the actual truth. I'm not a judge. I'm not here to judge anybody as it is. If there is a situation that needs to be brought up, the proper chain of command does need to take place. I don't feel like myself or any member of the board should take on this responsibility. Having my family um, as staff in the Taos Municipal Schools would give me that give me that even more to be like hey you know what stop right there i'm not your superior i'm not your principal i'm not your superintendent you need to take those steps up with them not with me and you know there's the there's the personal level and there's the professional level and with being on school board it needs to be the professional level at all times mr peralta this is very simple for me to answer. It's not my job. My job is to set policy and to take care of the budget. It's the superintendent and his team to take care of personnel issues. Please hold your applause throughout his speech. <laughs> Mr. Sanchez. <laughs> Thank you. Mine is simple too. It's not my job either. This is something between the uh, employees, uh, the administration at the school, and the superintendent. He has all the authority, and believe me, I don't want to poke my nose into something like that. Uh, <laughs> that's about all I can say. It's not, it's not our uh, purview there. Mr. Caldwell. Thank you. I'll keep these answers getting shorter and shorter. Um, <laughs> It should be noted, however, that uh, the question states that the primary purpose of the school board is to um, hire a superintendent, and that's one of a number of purposes set forth by statute of a superintendent or of a school board. Uh, another, another of which is to um, develop policies of the district, and one of the policies should be a personnel policy, a policy that deals with. Um, staff grievances and um, as you've heard it's in place and it should be adhered to and by no means other than for informational purposes should the superintendent be bringing the nature of any of these disagreements to the school board. Mr. Silva. Yes I agree with what the whole panel has to say though. Our strength is within our uh, superintendent. We give him the tools to succeed and we let him lay out the law, you know, it's his his uh, duty to deal with the staff issues, and all we can do is just follow behind him and and give him the tools that he needs to support him. Thank you. <laughs> 